This week on The Draft, we're talking to the architecture and design students and we're asking the question, what does your future in design hold for you? Welcome to The Draft by Vale Academy. I'm Scott Valentine and we're here to help hospitality entrepreneurs and the designers that serve them. And this week, we're speaking directly to the students. Recently, I gave a small talk at the University of Queensland and I wanted to give that talk to you. I put a lot of work into this talk, so I thought, hey, why not put it on the draft? The talk was directed at students, and I thought to myself, as we always try and teach you, let's solve the problems of an end user. And this talk was supposed to be about, well, what, what's the problem an end user finds when I'm talking to a bunch of students? And a lot of the time, they're wondering, well, what the hell does my future in design, you know, what does that look like? They don't know. And we can't predict the future, but I can take them through the process that we've been through and the learning curves and maybe offer a few shortcuts or insights for their future in design. So I'm going to take you through that talk right now and we will, um, you know, I hope you like it. Yeah. So a big problem I find with people who, who message me online or meet, meet me at events like the one I was at last week was that they're unsure of the future in design. Hasn't happened yet. But um, hey, let's take them through the journey of design that leads us to be talking today, you and me. This design industry, at some point, it's, it's going to make you question what you're doing with your life. And, you know, why the hell did you choose architecture? You thought all-nighters would have stopped after university, but 10 years later, they're still going on. This is where design over change, and the, the talk was about design over change. And the, this is where design over change comes in, because design doesn't change if you don't do something about it and figure out how to remain passionate about it. Well, this is the point you ask yourself, this industry is only worth doing if you get good. I need to get good or get out because being good is subjective, really subjective. So if you want to keep that passion going for about another 60 years, I should live for, I should pursue something that's unachievable, but worth achieving. So you decide to start your own business. That'll keep you on your toes. Uh, the problem is, if you follow those that came before you, you'll have an undifferentiated business. If you actually innovate and manage to differentiate what you, you're offering, uh, you might find you don't have a market. The road to, to getting good is not going to be easy. So what problem are you solving? Don't start with why. Start with a problem that needs solving. As architects, what problem do you solve? Think about that. A good point to start at might be look down the barrel of marketing. Often marketing is seen as a process that come, the process that comes after building something. We build the thing and then we try and sell it. The reality is if you haven't considered marketing at every step of the design process, then you haven't properly understood the people it's for or the value it creates for them, which limits your value as an architect. In an office or to a client, do you know where you fit in the value chain? So you, you yourself can value your own skills and understand where they bring value to those in need. So those in need might be your boss, the client, or the end user. You have value if you can give reassurance. Sounds simple, right? But the list of what bring, gives reassurance is going to change dramatically based on the risk someone's taking on. You have value if you can help people achieve their goals, not just make a physical building, but achieve what they want out of that building or that investment. So is it status? Is it peace and tranquility? Is it profits? Is it productivity? Be the linchpin to their goals. Not the Archie Wankner that talks about, I was interested in interstitial spaces between the juxtaposition of elements creating submersive submission, blah, 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 because you just devalued yourself. No one knows what you're talking about. They can't relate. And now they don't want to be a friend. Learn to take what you think as a design nerd and make it simple. Tell stories that engage people, engage with people even. It's perfectly okay if you suck at doing that today, but in 10 years, you're going to be amazing. Learn the art of words and the power of questions. Seek new approaches to architecture. Look to the niches with the inside architecture. There's a lot of them. And then look outside to marketing, branding, web apps, graphic design, chefs, musicians, manufacturing, and all the industries around architecture. Then ask yourself, what ideas could I readapt to design to make it more valuable? Fundamental. Many say you learn by doing, which is quite true, but a mentor, a good mentor, will help you see when you're your own worst enemy. Select your mentor. Don't have them select you. Otherwise, they'll probably just want someone to, you know, know how smart they think they are. Listen to the naysayers. I kind of look like this guy. 
They'll either reveal their own three fears through their negativity or they'll highlight some problems you're facing that you never realized. In time, you'll learn how to filter out the negative mindset and take the valuable lessons. They're really going to annoy you and they're going to make you doubt yourself, but you know, just keep going. This question again, how many people have architecture problems? How many people have business problems? My early perceptions of architecture was about creating buildings, which is fair enough, it is. But when I zoomed out and reevaluated what was going on, I had a realization. Architecture is one potential solution to a client's business problem. So it was staff training, websites, app flyers, planning, fashion, advertising, all that stuff is part of the business solution. So to, design, to solve a business problem, you need to solve an end user problem. An end user is a guest, it's a customer, it's a homeowner, it's an office worker, it's a puppy, it's a kitten. We design architecture for these end users. We call it user-centered design. It's about understanding the psychology, the wants, the needs, the mindset behind the problems being solved and solving them. For solving those problems with built space, food service, drinks, and hospitable people. You solve a user problem, you'll solve a business problem. So what causes these the problems that you're solving? People want to be recognized. They want to be validated, valued, and most of all, they want to be loved. Designed for their needs, designed to bring them joy, surprise, mystery, and even fear and uncertainty at times. You are the puppeteer to their emotional strings. You can program the way they see the world. So this has been our journey of discovery and questioning everything we know about architecture and design. And it's been very little to do with actually designing anything and everything to do with the way we think about design and how that directs our approach to design. So join us, keep following the draft. Um, we've had quite an impact in one year and now we're coming up to two years and we're still having an impact because you're watching today. And just follow along this journey because this has been one hell of a ride, completely experimental and all about doing things very differently to those that came before us. So keep paying attention to the draft and we'll be back next week with another episode to help you as a designer or a hospitality entrepreneur. Thanks.